What do you get when a white guy turns gay? And stereotypically, ghetto black woman. And what do you get when a white woman turns lesbian? An overly masculine and stereotypically ghetto black man. I mean, ever since Billie Eilish announced that she switched teams, you know, turned lesbian, she done turned into the albino soldier boy from the early 2000s. And no offense at all, but when did the LGBT community include transracial as an option, bruh? And dear white people, don't just take this from me. One of y'all own kind said the exact same words. Why do white people immediately after coming out act like the opposite gender, but black? You know, Billy Eilish came out and immediately started acting like a black. Like, do rag, white beater, masculine, lower their voice, walk around like a thug. Everything was like white gay men acting like black women, and they immediately put on an accent and start like wearing long acrylic nails and putting hoops in their ears. Like, and after seeing this video, it kind of got me thinking white people are low key having a huge hand in ruining modern day black culture. I mean, we all know what they did in the past, but goddammit, it's kind of repeating itself in the present. So today, we're gonna talk about how some white people are low key ruining, hijacking current day black culture. Quick disclaimer this does not apply to all white people, obviously. Don't try to wear the shoe if the shoe does not fit and if the shoe fits what can i say brother i don't know brief editor's note don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel we're on the road to 50k i appreciate it now let's get started hairstyles for black people hairstyles have been a significant part of black culture we got box braids regular braids cornrows two strand twists dreadlocks all of the above all of which have been massively stigmatized by guess who white people especially in the corporate world if you come in with locks or certain braids that was your cook buddy you look like a thug and the white ladies gonna lock their car doors whenever you walk by now obviously that sucks but you know what sucks even more is that some of these styles have been taken in today's day and colonized by white people you might have heard of something called a twist out a twist out is essentially after you get your hair braided or twisted and you remove it and it has a curly pattern i could actually do it right now now imagine i did this for my whole head it would be pretty curly right well check this out because white people have created a new thing that looks oddly familiar we got mama mia hair congratulations my guy you just achieved the freshest looking twist out my brother welcome to the black community you're invited to the cookout it's like i'm lying that is the purest form of colonization and imperialization if you ask me they made edges into something called sticky bangs me and my sticky bangs against the world. So I've been doing this hairstyle for the past two days and I'm just a little bit obsessed with it. Okay, these might actually be sticky bangs. These ain't edges, I'll tell you that right now. If you're white and you're watching this video and you don't understand what I'm saying, here's how I would put it. Imagine you had the craziest recipe of green bean casserole. Everybody in the world said it was horrible. If you make this meal, you're not getting hired and your entire family stood on business and continued and continued to make this dish until one day, everybody was like, hold on, this is not too bad. Actually, we're gonna take this all for ourselves. Y'all might feel some type of way, right? That's exactly how I would describe it speech patterns. Now, everybody knows that there is a certain dialect that black people like to talk in called African-American vernacular English, Ebonics. If you ever heard a person say ax instead of ask? Now, obviously, this type of speech is seen as ghetto, unprofessional, not real English. But recently on social media, a lot of these black terms have been colonized, bro. Like gyat, for example, or unk. They turned gyat into an acronym, bro. It means damn. It is an exclamation, all right? Like saying that somebody has a gyat makes no sense and makes me cringe inside, bro. And that's how I know the culture is in the wrong hands. Do these Terms that are from African American vernacular English are being turned into mainstream words and seen as slang. But it's not slang. It came from somewhere. It's not just made up TikTok words. These are words that have been existing, been around, we've been using, we've been saying, and now recently popularized and turned into a whole new meaning. And essentially became a part of like meme culture, which is weird in itself. Unk is typically used for an elderly black man. Nowadays, everybody is being called unk, bro. You could be 20 years old and you're an unk clothing styles. When Jordan 1s originally came out, they were not loved universally. And over time, after hip-hop culture, sneaker culture, Jordans quickly became one of the most loved shoes of all time, to a point where they eventually got uh, pirated by folks like this. This is who has the culture in a headlock right now. Now, I'm not trying to say that all resellers are white, and white resellers are the problem, but what I am trying to say is that there is an oddly similar pattern when it comes to things being invented by black people, originally hated by white people, and then became loved by white people. And I can point to a number of different things in fashion, like grills, like chains, like like streetwear. Streetwear was also extremely synonymous with hip-hop culture. And nowadays, you know, everybody of all colors be rocking it, which is not a problem in my opinion. But once again, you gotta acknowledge where you got that from, recognize the history behind it, understand all the negative stereotypes around those styles, and be an advocate against it. Otherwise, your ass is just a cosplayer, because that is literally the difference between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. And listen up, because I don't understand why people don't act like cultural appropriation can't happen to black African-American people. If you've seen chopsticks through somebody's head, and a white lady wearing a kimono, or 
or a black dude wearing a sombrero. People acknowledge that as cultural appropriation every day. Now, why is that any different than a white dude wearing grills, chains, Jordans, do rag with a snapback turned backwards? Now, another important question I want to ask, which I thought of when I saw the Billie Eilish picture, correct me if I'm wrong, but would you agree that she's trying to present herself as masculine in some of these outfits? So why is masculinity synonymous with black American culture? Think about that for a second. Black men are viewed as hyper-masculine, almost as not even human sometimes. You could say I'm reaching right now. It's a conversation worth having. Music. If you know, rock music, country music, all invented by black people. But they were taken over, and today's day, we are seeing them as white genres. One thing I will never forget is how they tried to take Lil Nas X Old Town Road and tried to say that was not country. That had to be a race thing, bro. Now, out of all the genres that black people invented, I would say hip-hop is the one that is still seen as a black genre, which even then has a lot of stereotypes against it. People make videos all the time talking about, oh, if you only listen to rap, this is a problem. If you only listen to rap, you're this, you're that. And those have some major racial implications behind them. I'm weaker. I'm stupider. I'm an idiot. Now, obviously, rap is not exclusive to black people. You got Eminem, you know, Jack Harlow's, and even Post Malone used black people, black music, and black hairstyles to come up and then switch genres and become a full-blown country pop white artist, which nobody ever really seems to point out, but I'm on to you. The thing with some of these white artists is that some of them are able to portray their music without really stealing black styles. Like, for example, Eminem. Eminem does not force a black scent, bro. But there are new artists like Ian, for example, who low-key throws on a black scent in their music. Come on, what's your name and where you from? I'm Ian, I'm from. Um, St. Louis. And it's a little weird because the way he presents himself is like suburban kid. Good thing. Overall with music, I feel like it's very important that we recognize where everything originated. As much as you might think rock music is some American genre that was invented by long haired white dudes with tattoos all over their body. The origination can actually be traced all the way back to like Africa from back in the day. And I think white rappers are fine. I think as a white rapper, you got to do your part into not being a culture vulture and actually advocating for the black community. I'm not out here telling you to be Martin Luther King Jr. or nothing, but dude, don't don't be a cosplayer. Overall, in conclusion, and this is just my opinion, so once again, don't take this as the opinion of all black people. To me, I would say white people have demeaned a lot of, lot of things. Jobs have been taken. Lives have been ruined. Dreads have been chopped. Women have been stereotyped and stigmatized and seen as trashy, ghetto, and obnoxious for some of these styles. Whether that's through hairstyles, clothing styles, music styles, speech patterns, and now all of a sudden, a lot of people who are white, but other races as well, are starting to steal the swag. And in my opinion, if you're gonna do that, you gotta one, acknowledge where it came from, Two, don't try to act like you did something new. And three, pay respects to the people who did it before you, bruh. I think if you do those three things, I would say that is cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. Which again, a lot of people seem to forget that black American culture is not just American culture. If you steal that, it's the same thing as stealing something from the Chinese, stealing something from Mexico, etc. But that was some ways that current day white people are ruining black culture. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know anything else I missed or could have talked about. I'm very sure that there's gonna be a lot of sensitive people in the comments talking about, oh, it's not that deep, stop crying, etc. I promise you, I I am not highly upset or nothing like that. I'm just seeing a problem and addressing the issue. And obviously, once again, this is not a dish to all white people, obviously. I know that there is plenty of great white people in this world, and I'm not racist. I have white friends. With that being said, make sure you like the video, subscribe, join the Discord link in bio. Road to 50K is on the way. We just hit 40,000. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. I'm gonna get out y'all way. Make sure you have an excellent rest of your day. See you guys next week. Unless you step to the second channel, I'll probably see you like tomorrow or the day after. With that being said, it's love you all. I love you, and I'm out.